Welcome back friends. Sorry about that. I thought I would try my old software, but it just doesn't want to cooperate. So I am going live on the old fashioned way using just my phone, no fancy switching software. So share the video if you are tuning in. I'm just going to give it a quick share myself. All right. Again, sorry about that, everyone. So as I was trying to say in my last attempt, there are only a few more days left of celebration. And I wanted to show you some of the items you can earn for free when you shop during celebration. So the first level is the level one rewards and you receive those at a $60 purchase. Uh, so these are three stamp sets that you can earn when you spend $60 and you have your choice of any of the three. So we have counting sheep, we have textures and frames, we have feels like home. Hi Allison, hi Pat, thanks for rejoining and sharing. Um, and with the counting sheep, you also have the option of the sheep dies. And I'm not going to open these because they are a prize for my upcoming bingo night. Uh, but they coordinate with the counting sheep. So you could actually, with a $120 order, get both of those rewards for free. There are also papers that you can earn for free. So you've probably seen me use the Penguin Place stamp set. This is the paper that coordinates with it. You can see that I have multiple packs because it's just super cute and I've used tons of it. So that is a freebie that you can earn with a $60 purchase. The Peaceful Prints coordinates with the Peaceful Deer Bundle, which is the focus of my Christmas card club. And there is still time to join for October and November. Um, the details are on my website. It's also in the um, bio of the first video, my first attempt to go live tonight. There's a link that you can click. And then we have the beautifully penned paper, which is just like our hand penned paper, but it is all black and white. So all of these papers, you can also select as free rewards during celebration with a $60 order. So those are level one rewards. A level two reward it is a $120 order. So at $120, you can pick two level ones or you have a couple of exclusive level two rewards. So Delicate Dahlias is a stamp set. It is a photopolymer set that you can earn for free. The other $120 level is the Shadow Summer Shadows Dyes which again, I can't open because they are a prize, but it, they do coordinate with the Shaded Summer stamp set, which is in the annual catalog. So a great reward to have dies that work towards that um, stamp set. The other thing you can get during celebration is if you host a party, and I know we're, we're really down to the wire, but we could get in a virtual party. If your party hits $375 in sales, you are going to get this free stamp set called In Your Words, and it is all these beautiful sentiments and greetings. I love the mixed fonts, but you're gonna get this absolutely free just for hosting a party. So lots of rewards to be had. There's still time. And of course, the best reward of all is um, taking advantage of the starter kit. So the starter kit is always the best deal in the catalog. It's $135. There's no tax and no shipping if you are in Ontario. And you get to choose $165 worth of products, any products from any of the current catalogs or clearance rack. And you're also going to get a free bundle from the mini catalog. So the mini catalog is this one here. And you get to choose any of the I believe it's seven bundles that are featured in the catalog for absolutely free. So you're going to get that in addition to the 165 that you are going to select. So it is truly the best deal. There's never an obligation to sell. Although if you want to sell and try and earn some additional income, that is always a welcome to, and you have my full support and then any subsequent orders you place, you're going to earn 20% on. So best deal in the catalog. 
but who's ready to get crafty? So tonight I wanted to work on some Halloween items and I've talked about this stamp set before and I actually used it last week on my live. It's called Frightfully Cute and there are coordinating dies that go with them, Frightful Tags. And these are back in stock. They had gone on back order. They came in, so they are, are available again. So if you are wanting to make Halloween projects, this is one that you want to try and order sooner rather than later to avoid it going on back order again. And so I'm going to create a card and a little treat package with you tonight using this stamp set. But I'm going to pair it with the cute Halloween 6x6 DSP and these papers are just adorable. Now this paper is actually part of a different suite. It's the cute Halloween suite or bundle um, which I don't have but I liked the paper so much I purchased them. So I'll give you a little sneak peek of those papers after but let me show you the card we're going to make first. So we're going to start with a card and this is the one that we're going to make. And actually the only stamping on this card is the tag, the little sentiment. The rest is done from the DSP. So let me show you how I did this. And this card was actually inspired by something I found on Pinterest. So I can't take design credit for it. I will find the name of the individual and post that in the comments afterwards. Thanks, Belinda. All right, so I'm gonna start with Highland Heather as my base. And so this is an eight and a half by five and a half. So it is a piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock that I have cut in half to create our card base. So when I fold my card bases, I like to burnish the edge with the bone folder. It just gives that nice crisp fold. And it's going to be in portrait. So you just wanna make sure that you've got it opening in the right direction. Next, I have a piece of that DSP from the Cute Halloween. So this is the piece I've selected. So on the one side, it's black and white and it's got little skulls and ghosts and bats and pumpkins. And on the back side, we have these creepy little haunted houses. So I'm gonna stick with the black and white, but really either of those would work. And this is an old olive, I believe, in behind, actually. So here's a little tip for you. When you get your designer series paper, it will actually tell you on the back what the coordinating colors are. So it's Old Olive Pumpkin Pie, Highland Heather, Flirty Flamingo, and Basic Black. So I'm gonna put my adhesive on the side here with the houses because I want the black and white side to be showing. And this piece is four inches by five and a quarter inches, so it is exactly a quarter inch smaller than our base, which leaves, it with, leaves us with an eighth of an inch border all the way around. So next I have a piece of Granny Apple Green. Now normally I would say use Old Olive to coordinate with the paper, but since I really don't have any green that's super prominent, I am going to go with something a little bit brighter. But what I want to do is give it that distressed look. So I'm going to pull in one of our sponge daubers and I like to label mine. We have a label maker, so I put a label on them so I don't mix up my colors. And I'm gonna pull in that Highland Heather ink, again, coordinating with our card base. So I'm just gonna dab my dauber in the ink and then I'm going to rub it along the edges of my cardstock. And you can see that it just distresses the edges, makes them look a little more aged and worn. And you can go as heavy or as light in your sponging as you want. I always like to start off a little bit lighter because you can go back over it if you want to make it heavier. And you could use our regular sponges for this as well. It's just a personal preference. And it's actually only recently that I've adopted the daubers instead of the sponges. I used to be a sponge girl all the way. I would actually get our sponges and then cut them into quarters so that they were smaller to use. So now this piece I want to layer on top of our base, just slightly angled. So I don't want it to be a, a drastic angle. I just slightly off-centered or off um, straight. 
feel like it just gives that sort of spooky Halloween feel because things are a little weird on Halloween. So there we have our three layers so far. So our next layer is another piece of that beautiful DSP. So again, on the one side we have black and white and they sort of just look like scribbles. And on the other side we have these beautiful stripes. And so we have the old olive, the Highland Heather, the black, the pumpkin pie. Um, but again, it's such a, a small amount of green that it does work with the granny apple. So I'm going to grab my paper snips. So this piece is two inches by three and a half. And I'm gonna create that banner flag end. So I'm gonna take my snips and cut up the middle. And then from the corners, I'm going to come in and meet the top where I snipped that line. Like so. So there we have our flag. And this piece is going to get attached straight again. So it's going to look a little off based on the fact that the granny apple layer is not straight. But again, I think it just adds to the cuteness. And you could actually even go a little angled the opposite way if you wanted. And actually, let's try that. So you can see them done both ways. So there's our base ready to go. So you might be wondering, I said there was no stamping other than our label. So these little pumpkins are actually another piece of the designer series paper. So it's this sheet here. And I mean, how cute are these little kitty faces? Love them. And then on the back are these black and white stripes. So the question remains, do we want to go with pumpkins again on the one I'm creating? Or do you want me to try one with the kitty faces? I'll let you comment while I spin my chair around and grab a piece of ribbon because I forgot to grab it. Any preferences, pumpkins or kitties? Pat says pumpkins. All right, Pat. <laughs> Belinda says kitties. Oh, I don't know. I think we need a tiebreaker. We'll give it one more moment. So what I did while I was waiting for comments to come in is I grabbed a piece of our black and white gingham ribbon. I absolutely love this ribbon. No other votes. Hmm. All right. I think I'm gonna stick with the pumpkin. Sorry, Belinda. I'm just going to use my snips and I'm going to cut out three. I actually like smaller pieces when I'm cutting. So I'm just going to give myself a little bit. <laughs> Pat says, go kitties. All right. So we've got one kitty here. So I'm just going to use my snips. And what I love about these images is they're actually quite easy to cut. They're not very detailed. So again, I like a small piece when I'm cutting. So these images make it easy to fussy cut. I don't really like the term fussy cut, but it seems to be one that everybody knows. So I am just going to cut out our kitty faces. All right, so there's one. And I'm gonna have to find two more so we're gonna get this one and this one if cutting your designer series paper gives you heart palpitations don't let it up until recently i was probably the biggest paper hoarder Oh, that's a good idea, Pat. Top and bottom pumpkin and middle kitty. That could work too. We'll play with it and see how they look. Um, so yeah, so I used to be the biggest paper hoarder because I would buy all these beautiful patterned papers, but I never wanted to cut them up because they were just so pretty. Or I planted a scrapbook with them and I have 
um, 12 by 12 scrapbooks. So I have stacks and stacks of designer series paper. And when I met Kylie Bertucci in Orlando a couple of years ago, she introduced me to her love it, chop it theory, which means if you love the paper, chop it and use it. Don't hoard it. Share it with others who will love it equally as much. So I've been trying to use my paper a whole lot more. So don't let it give you heart palpitations to cut up your paper. I'm actually gonna cut out a couple of pumpkins and a couple of kitties and we're gonna see which we like better. Belinda, you're a paper hoarder too. <laughs> yeah, this, this one is good for using up DSP and it's actually really good for scraps. So if you have some of those strips that aren't really big enough to do card bases with, you can use them as accents. Or if you have um, larger images like this, they just, they cut really easily. So go back through your DSP and find those papers that you can love and chop and get them Get them on projects to share with everybody. All right, so there we have two kitties and a pumpkin. I'm gonna cut out another pumpkin and we're gonna see which one we like better. The faces on these kitties and pumpkins are just too cute. All right, so here's another pumpkin. So let's do this. Oops. Two pumpkins and a kitty or two kitties and a pumpkin? What do you guys think? Two cats. All right, two cats and a pumpkin it is. <laughs> I like these little cats, they're super cute. All right, so before I attach those, because I am going to use dimensionals to put them on, we need to do our tag. So for our tag, I am using the Less Trick and More Treatin' from the Frightfully Cute stamp set. And I'm going to use this tag or label from the matching dies. And I did have a scrap of Highland Heather out to do my tag and it has mysteriously gone missing. There you go, Belinda, two kitties and a ribbon. Two kitties and a pumpkin because the ribbon in the middle will be black. That's perfect. Aha. I buried it under my celebration items. All right. So this is just a scrap of Highland Heather. I don't have a measurement for it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp my sentiment in the Granny Apple Green. Again, tying all my colors together. I'm going to stamp that in the middle. Close that because I will stick my fingers in it. And then I'm going to pull in my mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. And we're going to cut this out using that label die. And I love this little die because it's got the stitching detail as well. And if you've watched me for a long time, you know that the now retired stitch shape dies were my absolute favorite. So I'm glad that there's another die with the stitched edging. It just makes my heart happy. Pull that out. And then before we attach this, much like we did with our granny apple, we're going to distress the sides with our Highland Heather. So I've got my dauber again and we're just going to go around die. Oh. Oh. 
Hopefully you guys are still getting me. It went black on my end. Oh. I'm just gonna refresh my feed here, give me a sec. There's nothing worse than doing a live and having your video conk out. So sometimes if Facebook kicks you out, if you go out and go back in, it will fix the issue. Belinda, you can still see me, okay? Good. Funny, it's, uh, I can't seem to see it. It keeps freezing on my end, so hopefully we're still good. Sorry. Just trying to pull it up again. Can't interact with you if I can't see the comments. Oh man. Technology is not my friend today. Okay. I think I got it. Maybe. Let's go with this. Okay. We're gonna go with this and hope it's still good. So I've sponged my label. Now I want to attach my ribbon before we attach it to our base. So I'm going to use my seal. I'm going to put three lines of adhesive across the back of the label. And then all I'm going to do is stick my ribbon to one of those rows. So this is the top row. So I've got my tail on one end and then I'm going to loop it out the other side, bring it back across the center attaching to another one of those rows of adhesive. And then we're gonna do the same thing on this side. We're gonna create a loop and then stick it across the bottom row of adhesive on the back side. So we have this little zigzag pattern. And then we're gonna use Stampin' Dimensionals to attach it to our card base. I'm gonna grab those. And I am going to use four dimensionals. So basically one in each of the little corners. And this serves two purposes. It covers up any extra little bits of adhesive that maybe you didn't cover with the ribbon, but it also allows you to pop this off your base. And you notice I haven't trimmed my side yet and that's okay. I'm gonna stick this down first. Right about there, I think. And now I can come in with my snips and trim the edge. I just find it, it gives you some tension to be able to cut a nice clean cut. So there's our tag with our ribbon. So now we're gonna use those dimensionals again and we're gonna attach our pumpkin and kitty. So again, just one dimensional per image. Oops, I'm gonna peel off my backs. And I'm gonna start with the pumpkin because it's going to go in the center. And so we're gonna go right about there. And then we're gonna come in with our kitty. And then our other kitty, like that. So there is our first project. I like that idea, Pat. Thanks for the, the idea of alternating the images because that is super cute. All right. So now I'm going to pull in, I don't have a, a pre-done sample for our next project, at least not in Halloween papers. I can show you one in other papers. But let me show you this full pack of paper. So there are four of each sheet. I'm just gonna pull them all out. And then you can tell me which one we should use for our next project. The Halloween colors are just so awesome, Belinda. I don't know that the camera does them justice, to be honest. And that one. Okay. So 
So these are, are the papers. So this is the one side. Of course, all our designer series paper, whether it's six by six or 12 by 12, is double-sided. So how awesome are those? And then of course, if we flip these over, oops, let's go this way. They're all black and white on the reverse side, which is just fabulous. So, you know, these are some of the papers we used. This one has got candy corns and little look like peppermints. We've got some booze over here. This one is more like a, a night sky. So pretty. All right. So let me show you what we're going to make. So these are cute little treat packages. We actually made these at my summer getaway retreat. And it just opens up. It's almost like one of those, um, you know, kiss container things that we, we would have made when we were younger. And you can put little treats in the, the pocket here. So if it's a little, one of those little fun size Halloween candies. So these would be cute for um, classes. If you have kids that go to school or daycare, uh, they could be good on you know, Halloween morning for your own kids. If you wanted to give them a little treat for their lunch, you could put them in a little Halloween theme. So that this is what we're going to make with one of these papers. So you guys tell me which paper we want to use. I think they're all cute, so. Yes, Pat, residents at the nursing home, they would actually probably get a great kick out of these. And they're so easy to make. There's actually no, with the exception of the top, there's no cutting. Um, it, it's all one sheet of six by six DSP. And Melinda, they are all cute. I'm torn, I'm thinking this cute polka dot. Ooh, or we could do the candies on the back of that. Hmm. So many decisions. <laughs> Pat, I can absolutely send you the details. I will get those to you afterwards. I actually have the tutorial pre-written for this one because it was part of my retreat. So I'll actually just flip that over to you. Well, then it says the dots or the thick stripes. Hmm. Pumpkins or ghosts? Oh my, so many choices. I think I'm going to go with the dots. And the only reason I say that is because... It's, it doesn't have a top or bottom in, in terms of the paper where this one does and you're going to get them going one direction on the front and the opposite direction on the back. So let's go with the dots. So you do need to have a, um, a scoring device, whether it is your trimmer or another scoring tool. So we're going to score at one and a half. And again, this is a six by six piece of paper and then four and a half, or you could rotate it 90 degrees and score, or sorry, 180 degrees and score at one and a half again. So one and a half and one and a half or one and a half and four and a half. And then we're going to rotate it. And I always mess up this measurement. So I'm going to remeasure my handy ruler here. So it is two and five eighths and three and a quarter. So two and five eighths and three and a quarter. And that's it. So that's all our scoring. Now we get to fold. So I'm going to go back to the two score lines we did at one and a half. 
fold those in. So everything's gonna get valley folds. And then we're going to fold along those two ones. So we wanna work with the two one and a half or one and a half and four and a half scores folded into the center. So this is where we're going to be working. And so all I'm doing is folding along those intersecting score lines. That's what's going to become the mouth of the pocket. So what you need to do here, and the easiest way to describe this is this point here where the two score lines intersect. So your um, vertical and your horizontal. You want to sort of put your thumb and your finger on the inside there. And then you're going to fold so that this score line here ends up along the side like this. And I know my arm's gonna be in the way, so I'm just gonna rotate it so you can see. So we've basically just folded that. And again, I'm gonna pick this up. So that intersecting corner and that seam is now on the side and then you're just going to use your finger and crease that little triangle on the inside so now if I lay this flat you can see there's a crease line here that wasn't there before so then we repeat the process with all four of those score lines so again score line here needs to come over to the side so we're just going to fold that into position and then crease that triangle. So there's one side. So can you see how it starts to create that pocket with those crease lines? So then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. I like to rotate it just for ease of use. So again, we're going to come up score line to score line, crease the fold open it back up and then the other way crease the fold so now we have this little mouse that says feed me feed me give me treats <laughs> I could seriously have too much fun with that it's like those cards in the you know when we were kids the, the pop-up cards so once you have your creases done, you do want to adhere the top and bottom here so that the only thing popping up is that little mouth. So I'm just using my seal. I don't need anything heavy duty. And I'm just gonna go right along the edge. So where the crease is here, right to the where that triangular crease that we just created is, we're going to put our adhesive. So we're gonna do that on both sides. Fold that into the center, give it a rub, and repeat on the other side. Give it a rub, and there we have our cute little pouch. So now we need a topper of some sort. So you could do just about anything here. What I like to do is use our layering circles dies and cut out a top using one of the circles. So I'm gonna grab those. And I believe it's this one. Yes. So it's not the largest scallop. So if you've not had the layering circles dies, there's two different sets in here. So this set and this set coordinate, and then this set and this set coordinate. So I call these one and these two. So it's the largest of set two for the scallops that we're going to use. Now, what color do we want to cut this from? Do we want flirty flamingo, pumpkin pie, old olive, highland heather, or do we want to go basic black? What do you guys think? I'm gonna pull in the baby boss, as I like to call it. Oh, Pat, I'm sorry to hear you're on sick leave. Hopefully you're not, uh, you're on the mend is what I was meant to say. Hopefully you're on the mend. 
nothing too serious. All right. Pat says black. Let's go black. All right. So these are my scraps. I like to keep my scraps in our six by eight cello bags. If you've watched my lives before, I will say this multiple times because they are truly the handiest thing. Oh, not on the men yet. I'm sorry to hear that, hun. So I just need to trim my paper a little bit because it's too wide to go through the baby boss. General rule of thumb is three inches, maybe three and an eight. So what I'm actually gonna do is create a square. And now my circle will fit on there. Sounds good, Pat. Okay, so there's our label. I'm gonna run this through. So here's the downside to well-used embossing plates or cutting plates is they, <laughs> your die cut will sometimes stick to them. Okay. So now all we have to do is fold our scallop circle in half. And if you pick two points of the scallops, they should actually fold nicely right between them. And I'm gonna give that a nice crease with my bone folder. And you know what? I did cut the wrong size. After all that, that's okay, we're gonna make it work. I don't mind if you can see a little bit peeking out. So the larger size will actually cover edge to edge, but that's okay. So what we're gonna do is, we're again, we're just gonna use our seal. We're going to attach one half to the back. And it doesn't matter which of these halves you decide to do. I like to sort of pinch the pocket together get it lined up on the front that's not sticky in position where I want it. And then we can fold over our scallop. So now it's attached to the back and we've got it in the position we want. So you might be wondering how you're going to get this to stay closed. So there's a couple of options. So I actually purchased these little Velcro dots off of Amazon. So it's just a, a male and a female end. So I'm just gonna peel one of each off of here. You like a bit of the background showing? Me too. So what I like to do is attach one end to the underside of the scalloped label and then the coordinating side. It will actually attach to that piece of Velcro and then I will close up the pocket give it a push and now that Velcro will be perfectly lined up. So that's option number one is if you have Velcro or um, you want to place an order off Amazon or go to your favorite um, sewing store to pick up Velcro you can use that. The other option is that you use um, twine, baker's twine, or a ribbon that you like, and you can actually punch a hole through the pocket and tie a little bow to keep it closed. But I like the Velcro because it makes it easier to open. So now we get to decorate. So I think we're gonna stick with our kitties and pumpkins to coordinate with our card. And I have a pumpkin pre-cut, so let's find him. I did have a pumpkin pre-cut because I cut an extra one. There it is. Oh, so cute. I'm actually gonna take his stem off. Ah, oh, look how cute that is. All right, and then I'm gonna grab another scrap of this Highland Heather. And I think I'm going to pick 
I want to see how big these are. I wonder. Oh, let's go with Batty for You. So here's a little trick. I think I've shown this before on my lives for assembling our cling stamps. So I like to peel the backing off the image and then peel it off my stamp. And then I use the outline to line up my stamp. And then when I peel it off, it's ready to go. So here's our body for you. And I'm going to grab our little bat here too. And we are going to stamp in Memento. Oh, I just lost my image again. So let me know if you guys are still with me. Batty for you. Oh, goodness. Hopefully you guys are still okay. Totally lost my feed. I can't even see if you guys are okay. <laughs> oh, good times. Oh, maybe. We're gonna try it. So then I've also got the little bat. So I just stamped that beside the greeting. I'm gonna cover up my memento because I will stick my finger in there. And I like to cut out greetings. So we're gonna cut our little baddie for you with our bat with our paper snips. It must be my internet that's the issue. We just upgraded, and I think I was talking about this last week. It's supposed to be much faster and no issues, and I've had nothing but issues since we made the switch. So I'm gonna blame that for the issues. So there's our little baddie for you. Oh my gosh, this is cute. All right, so I'm gonna use mini Stampin' Dimensionals to pop this up. Because that little bat is super tiny. All right. So we're going to put that right in the center of our scallop. There's our baddie for you. And then we're just going to add a little pumpkin accent to make it easier to grab. So all I'm going to do is put a little adhesive across the top here, and that's going to get stuck to our flap. Try and get it as centered as possible, like so. And there we have our cute little treat box, envelope, bag, whatever you'd like to call it, which now coordinates with our Cards. How fun are those? They're bootyful. <laughs> All right, so that is everything. Don't forget, um, if you are looking to join my Christmas card club, you have until the 30th, which is Thursday, to sign up. You will make 24 cards featuring the Peaceful Deer Bundle. Our first month has already gone out, but you can still register for October and November. November. <laughs> Pat, guess what the residents are getting? That's awesome. They're so easy to make, and it's a great way to use up, again, retired DSP. So, again, love it, chop it. Cut those 12 by 12 pieces up to 6 by 6, and you can get four out of one sheet of 12 by 12. So... There we have it. Um, 
regular card club. So my all occasion card club is still also running. Although for October, it will be featuring Frightfully Cute. So if you like the stamp set, this is going to be the feature. And then my um, Halloween sampler class is coming up in October on the 24th, I believe the date is, and it is also featuring Frightfully Cute. So you're going to get a lot of bang for your buck if you purchase Frightfully Cute with me and earn your celebration rewards. So that is everything. Thank you for sticking with me through the technical difficulties. I truly appreciate it. Pat, I will get you the instructions for the pouches so you can make those for the residents and have a great week, everybody. Thank you.